Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Welcome for the first time. And this is my first video in a tutorial series about Luminar Neo. This is my beginner's guide, quick start to getting up and running and editing your photos quickly in Luminar Neo. I'm gonna give you a full tour of the product, the different areas, things to be aware of, and allow you to just get up and running quickly and get started editing. If you haven't yet, maybe check out that video. It talks about some of the features that are new and some of the things that are different. And by the way, if you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I'll be posting videos here every week about Luminar Neo. Hope that you'll follow along and consider subscribing. Okay, let's get going. I am in Luminar Neo. The first thing I recommend that you do once you load it is to go up here and click on check for updates just to make sure you have the most current version of the product. That only takes a moment, but if you need to download an update, it might take a couple of minutes. However, check that out first, and then the second thing I recommend you do, if you're gonna be using it as a plugin, is click on Install Plugins, and as you can see here, you can install Luminar Neo as a plugin to Photoshop or Lightroom. I've already done that, but if I had not, I would just click the button here, which would say Install, if I hadn't yet already done it, but I have, that's ready to go. So I've made sure that my product is updated on the most current version. I've got it set up as a plugin if I'm gonna be using it as such. However, I wanna point out that this video is walking through the product from the point of view of, of using it as a standalone. Now, the first thing that you need to do, and by the way, I will do a video that goes into more depth about this, but the first thing you need to do is get photos into Luminar Neo. So on the left-hand side, you can see the entire catalog set up here. This upper section, these are folders that are automatically created by Neo based on the content of what's down here in the folders that I've added to Neo. If you wanna add a folder, you can just click on the plus sign and it will open up your browse window and you can either pick folders on your desktop or if you've got an external drive like this, I could go in and grab any of these folders and just click add folder and it will drop them into Neo and in fact, I have done that here already. You can see in total, I've got 237,493 photos here in Luminar Neo. I also wanna point out that if you have nested folders, if you click on them, it will actually pull in those subfolders and it categorizes based on the folder and it shows you the number of images in each folder. So these are in an external drive, whereas this demo files folder that I'm in is actually on my desktop. It's something that I use for a lot of YouTube videos where I just store copies of images so that I can demonstrate those without booting up and attaching my external drive. That's all personal preference. And like I said, I will go into an uh, in-depth video about the catalog, but I wanted to point that out. But that's how you add photos. There are also uh, the ability to add single image edits. So these are just some images I've dropped in for various reasons, and you can just click on that folder and add photos, and then go grab a folder, or excuse me, a photo, and it will drop that single photo in there. That would be in case you don't want to use the catalog or library features within Neo. One other way to get photos into Neo is via Luminar Share, and that is designed to take photos from your mobile device and bring them into Neo. You get to that in this upper right-hand corner, you click on that little export arrow, and then you click on connect, and it will give you a QR code. As it says here, you scan it, you're basically connecting your mobile device to Neo, and then you can select the photos that you want to move over, move them over, and they will show up here for you to edit. I will do a video showcasing how Luminar Share works in the future. Okay, I want to go ahead and walk through the user interface here. You can see that there's dates, uh, date ranges, and the number of photos. Keep in mind, whatever's highlighted on this left-hand side, that is the folder that I'm in. So I'm currently in the demo files folder, and you can see I've got a lot of different photos in here. I can click on this one, and you've got a few options here. The first thing to be aware of is there is EXIF data down in this bottom left-hand corner. If you click on the little eye, it will open up this window. It will show you that this was ISO 200, 14 millimeters, F16 for one second. It is a raw file. It gives me the date and a lot of other information. You can click that eye again to collapse that, but that's handy to have in case you want to have some uh, information about your photo. Now, let's say you've selected that photo and want to edit the photo, you would go up here and click on edit. That would be your next step. But before we do that, while I'm in this catalog view, I wanna point out a couple of other things. 
Over here in the UI, you can see that it says showing, and you've got a drop down menu of all photos or favorites, rejects, or unmarked photos. So as you can see, you can come in and click a heart uh, to favorite the photo. If you double click and get a full screen, you can have this film strip view down below, and you've also got the reject button here if you'd like to use that. You can click catalog again to put that back into the catalog view. The other thing that you have here is the ability to sort based on some of the information about the images, capture time, edit time, any pics that you've done, file name, and you can do it ascending, descending, things like that. Also, the view options here, you can do small, medium, large, or largest. And so you can just see that's gonna increase or decrease the size of the images in your view. I tend to leave it in small, that's just personal preference. And as you've already seen, this is the export window. You can export to disk, you can message it, you can mail it, or you can, of course, get into Luminar Share. But let's say you've got this image and you want to edit this image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Edit, and this will open up the photo in the editing window. Now, once you're here, you've got lots of different options about what you wanna do. I'm obviously not gonna cover all of these tools in depth. I will be coming back in videos and covering these. Plus, if you follow that playlist, which is my Luminar Neo playlist, I've already got quite a few videos there and plenty more are coming. So once you're in the editing window, this is, as the name implies, where you do your editing to the image. On the left-hand side, you have the layers panel. You can click the plus and you have a number of built-in options, which are overlay layers that you can place on top of this photo. By the way, if you're not familiar with layers, that's okay. I will be doing a video about that as well but you can add the layers and then do some customization to how that layer is blending with your base photo below that. Again, I won't be covering that in this video, but layers panel is on the left, whereas on the right, these are all your editing tools. So you can see they're categorized. There's essentials, which is this top category, and then creative, which has a lot of, as the name implies, creative options like sky replacement, mood enhancement, sun rays, Orton effect, things like that are all here in creative. Portrait, of course, as the name implies, is for portraits, which is clearly not this photo. And then professional has a couple of tools, and I'm hoping that there are a couple of more tools that will come into that into the future. But again, I will be covering all these in depth. This is where you do your editing. So this is a raw file. It says raw here. And if you want to dive into how this develop filter works and learn more about it, I've got a video there. I'm gonna just do something very basic, which is just lifting the exposure, lifting the highlights, maybe adjusting the contrast. Maybe I'll come in here and give it a little bit of vibrance, a little bit of tint, maybe a tiny bit of warmth, just kind of popping it a little bit and actually maybe a little bit more uh, lift in shadows. And so this little eyeball is a before and after for that filter. So that's what it started like, and that's what it looks like now. I've also, in the bottom here, as part of the user interface, got an eye as well. So it's the same thing. This is a before and after for the entire photo versus these are tool specific before and afters. I've only used this one tool, so right now it's the same thing, but if I were to apply multiple tools to this image, I could use this one on the bottom, this little eyeball, to show me a before and after for the entire photo. I've also got a zoom window here, so you can see I can zoom in if I'd like to, or I can just go back to fit to screen. And then the actions here, basically, the option is to revert to the original photo. I'm gonna leave it like this. I like this edit so far. I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and once you click it, you will notice that the edits tab now has a one on it, and that means one filter has been used to edit this photo. You can click on that, and there are all the edits I just made in the develop raw filter. If I wanted to get rid of that, I could reset it or discard edits, but I'm gonna leave it because I like how it looks so far, and this is one of the nice things about Luminar Neo. I can now go back in and use develop again. You can see that everything's zeroed out because this is a second instance of that filter. The first one has already been sent over to the edit tab, so that's effectively like your edit history. You can go back in and adjust it if you want to, remove it as I said already, or you can come back here to the main tools tab and then just use that tool again to do something else and maybe possibly mask it in if you wanna be very specific and controlled about where that second edit is going in the photo. There are a lot of great AI-based tools here in Luminar Neo, including Accent AI, which I absolutely love. It does a great job of really popping a photo. That's a very popular one. It's been around for a while. Structure AI is very similar as well. It'll allow you by dragging it to the right to add, as they call structure, which is kind of like 
I call it crunch, but it adds a little bit of crunch, a little bit of drama to the photo. You can see the before and after. If you look at the sky and the buildings, they all are a little bit punchier and have a little bit more oomph to them. Structure can be used that way. It can also be used to the left, what I call negative structure, to really smooth things out. So lots of power, lots of flexibility, lots of control, because you can also go in and mask those options in. I'll get into masking in a future video, but you can think of masking like painting. You apply an edit, and then you use the masking brush to paint it in to a certain specific part of the photo and not anywhere else. So that's a couple of the essentials tools. You might wanna come in here and perhaps go into mystical and add a little bit of kind of that romantic lighting, a little bit of drama to the photo. It helps create just a little bit more mood, if you will. There it is before and there it is now. That one looks a little bit to me like kind of a little bit of a glow, kind of a little bit like an Orton effect, something kind of like that. You can do that. You've got portrait tools, and of course, you've got very powerful contrast and color tools down here in the pro section. Again, I'll come back and go into all of those in a lot more detail, but if you ever want to check your progress, there's that at the bottom, before and after, so there it is before any edits at all, and there's my current state. And once again, as I said, if I go to the Edit tab, you can see that's the last tool that I used, and they are stacked from the bottom to the top in the order in which I use them. And as I said, I can go back in and adjust them accordingly or remove them entirely if I decide I don't like what it's done to my photo. Now, I've reset the photo because I wanna show you another thing you can do when editing, and that is we've looked at tools and we've looked at edits. Let's also look at presets. Now, if you're not familiar with the preset, it's basically a one-click adjustment to your photo. It's a great way to take a look and apply it immediately to your photo. Let's say you have a preset that you like and it looks great on a certain kind of photo. You could then go through multiple photos that fit that style and click the preset to have a one-click adjustment. I also sometimes use them as a kind of a launching point to give me an idea of what I want to do with the photo. But there's a lot of different things you can do with presets. Again, I will cover that in depth in a future video. But if you click on presets, let me back up, you've got an entire menu here of different options. They are categorized by type or category, if you will. In this case, I'm going to go into scenery and I'm going to choose this fast fix. And with one click, it's applied a different look to my photo. If I show you the before and after, that's the way it was, and that's how it is now. You can favorite, like clicking this heart button. We'll create that as a favorite, so it'll show up in your presets favorite folder. And you've also got this sliding option here to take it from 100, which means all of the effect of that preset is applied to the photo, all the way down to zero, where you basically would have none of it applied. I'm going to leave it at 100 for now, but I want to show you now if you go over to the edits tab, where again, remember, this is basically your editing history, you now see Fast Fix is there as a preset in your edits tab showing that it's been applied to this photo. So you can trash it if you want to and start over, and you can also adjust the opacity of it here. On top of that, if you like it but you think you haven't quite done enough, you can go in and take some additional filters and apply them to the image. Maybe I want to lift the shadows, and that's giving me a little bit of a boost there. I like that. And maybe I want to go into Accent and AI and apply a little of that across the photo as well. Now you'll notice my Edits tab, Again, basically, that's your history. You can click on that and you can see I've got this Accent AI that I just applied as well as develop on top of the Fast Fix preset. So you can stack these edits on top of the preset to customize the look of your photo. In this case, I've taken that unedited photo to where it now currently looks like that. So lots of power, lots of flexibility, and lots of control over your images using presets and tools, and you have the ability to go in and refine them or adjust them later on the Edits tab. Let's say I'm finished with this one and I wanna save it. You can then export the photo this way. Click that button, click on Disk, and you will get an export window that comes up. You can rename this to whatever fits. I'll just call this demo image, and you can choose your location, desktop, whatever. You have export options, including resizing, choosing the color space, and the format from various popular formats. You just hit save, it'll drop the photo there for you, and you'll be done and good to go. So that's a quick overview of how you can get started quickly and easily with Luminar Neo and start editing your images. We've covered how a catalog works, adding photos to it, what the UI looks like, and the buttons and the various settings to be aware of. And of course, we've run through the editing tab with all the tools, the edit history, and the preset.
presets, and then we exported an image. So this basically gave you from beginning to end how to get photos in, how to edit them, how to export them, and hopefully it's provided you some guidance to really get started on your own journey with Luminar Neo. As I said at the beginning of the video, if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. We've got lots of Luminar Neo videos coming, and this is just the beginning of my tutorial series. This designed for new users to get up and get running with the app quickly. Thanks for watching, my friends. I do appreciate it. I will be back soon with more videos. And if you haven't yet and are interested, leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about this, what questions you have, and I'll do my best to answer them. Always enjoy interacting with you. Thank you for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos. Take care of yourselves. And until then, my friends, adios.